let's just go before the Lord right now. God, we come before you. You are the great I am. Anything we need, oh God, you are. And we just want to make a declaration before you that we will continue to worship you in spite of it all, God. Lord, we just want to lift up our loved ones. We want to lift up our communities. We want to lift up the sick. We want to lift up those in mourning. We want to lift up, oh God, our neighborhoods and our our incarcerated loved ones, the ones who are still trapped in cycles of violence. Uh, We want to pray for the, the violence on our street corners. God, we lift it up to you. And we believe that you are more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above even more than we can ask or think. We put it all in your hands. We thank you for this time of worship. God, we pray that you would meet us right here where we are. Speak a word into our hearts, Lord, that it will inspire us to go on in Jesus' name. We love you, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and thank God. Well, thank you, family, for being with us another Sunday. Hey, it is Women's History Month, praise the Lord. And also, uh, I think I've been hearing people saying we're going to run back Black History Month and it's going to be Melanated March. Like, I'm here for it. All right, so let's do it. All right, so um, we're just glad for you to be worshiping with us another Sunday. I am very excited about this word. I believe that God has a word just for us. Are you ready? Come on, let's get into a uh, uh, posture to receive from God, and let's just get right into our word today. Hey, I have a question before we start. Um, do anybody out there, do you still play video games? Is that still a thing? I remember Pastor Mike uh, mentioned video games in one of his sermons, and the chat just blew up. Like, I feel like we got gamers out there. Do we have any gamers still play video games? Maybe you're like me in the 80s. That was your time. Uh, You play Pac-Man, Centipede. That's all I know. Donkey Kong. Um, Any gamers? Are are people, do y'all still play? Okay. Because, you know, my video game experience ended at Atari. Anybody remember Atari? Yeah, that was it for me because Atari was great. We played Pong, we played the tank game, we played Pitfall, we played Pac-Man, and all I had was like the joystick and the little button, and I was good. I could play all day, but then they introduced all this new stuff with the A, B, Y, forward. All It was too much, and uh, after Atari, that's where my video game expertise ended. But for those who are still gamers out there, what y'all playing? Xbox? Uh, what y- y'all doing? Uh, NBA? 2K? I don't know. I don't know what y'all doing. But for those who are still gaming, from what I gathered, the key to playing video games is that you move from one level to the other, right? So if you're on level one, the goal is to get to the next level. Like you're trying to continue to go like Mario. Remember Mario? Like you want to keep going to different levels. Have any of you ever like completed the whole game? That's like super gamer. I don't know if any of y'all are out there, but from what I gather, the whole point of the game is to go from level to level. It would be so boring like to be playing level two like forever, right? So level to level. Well, in the same sense, this is kind of like the title of my message and what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about leveling up in prayer. Come on, say it with me, leveling up in prayer. Just like we don't want to perpetually stay in one stage of our life, even in our prayer life, it wouldn't make sense for us just to stay on one level perpetually we want to go from one level to the other from glory to glory can I get an amen a matter of fact we are going to do a prayer level up challenge this month a prayer level up challenge this month at the way Christian Center is for the month of March thank you prophetess Sierra because we gonna level up level up Level up, level up. Okay, whatever. So there we go. This is this is our challenge for the month. We are going to level up in prayer. Are y'all down? You with me? Anybody down? I've been seeing a lot of saints doing a lot of the challenge, and yeah, we just gonna we gonna do the prayer challenge. There it is. Yes, yes, yes. So if we're gonna do a, a prayer challenge, let's just define prayer. Let's just throw it out there. Okay. 
because how should I put it? Um, if our faith is Chick-fil-A, then prayer is Chick-fil-A sauce. You get me? Or Polynesian sauce, however you feeling. Prayer is our secret sauce. It's what makes our, our faith, our Christian, this is what makes it just so much better. It's prayer. And prayer is simply talking to God. Have you heard that before? Prayer is just simply talking to God, having a conversation with God. But I would like to throw out one exception to that rule. Prayer is talking to God, but it's also allowing God to talk back to you. Can I get an amen? So it's not just us giving God this one-sided conversation. It's not about us throwing up a wish list, a Christmas list, a three wishes to a genie. That's not what it is. Prayer, and I, let me tell you, I have been guilty of just throwing up a prayer or throwing up my, my list or just having a one-sided conversation. Have you ever been with someone who, like, talks a whole lot and they don't give you, like, one word in edgewise? That's how my prayer life has been in the past. I'm just laying it on God. God don't have no room to say nothing back. I know that's me. Y'all pray for me. But, you know, this is where God is wants to challenge us because you know and I know in any human relationship, there really is no relationship if there's no communication. Amen. Like there, unless you actually talk to someone, unless you have a deep conversation with someone, you can, do you really know them? I mean, you can have like a relationship via text. You could like do a more pen pals. Remember pen pal? That was great. But if you really want to go deep with someone, if you really want to know who they are, you have to sit down and have a conversation. You have to, you can't just keep these little do it moving conversation. You have to have a deep conversation. It's the same thing with God. And if we are to have a meaningful relationship with God, at some point in our lives, we're going to have to conversate and have a deep conversation with God. We're going to have to level up in prayer. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to keep it 100. Somebody say keep it 100. I'm going to keep it 100. There are many reasons why a lot of us just, you know, don't like to pray. You kind of cringe when I say, like, we're going to do prayer this month. Like, oh, here we go. Prayer. There, there's different reasons why I, I know in the, well, I felt like I haven't, like, prayer wasn't, like, my thing. It was, like, the mothers at church. That was their ministry. It was, y'all pray for me. Like, I'm going to give you my prayer. It ain't really my thing. So here's some reasons, Re reasons why sometimes we don't feel comfortable praying. The first one is a lot of times we are afraid of disappointment, right? Um, or maybe you've experienced disappointment in the past. Perhaps you've prayed for something. Per perhaps you've asked God for something and it didn't happen. And you just really feel disappointed. You feel let down. Therefore, you're like, I don't know about this prayer thing. I tried it. Didn't work. Didn't get what I was asking for. That person still died. I still, I lost my job. I had to do X, Y, and Z. Something happened in the past that makes us be like, uh, prayer is not my thing. A lot of uh, other people, the reasons why we don't pray is we feel inexperienced. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, uh, am I doing this right? Am I saying this right? You know, we've been in situations where we've heard other people pray and they sound like amazing and they have all these eloquent words and they know how to string it together so great. And then like you're hoping no one calls on you to pray. Anybody been there before? Like uh, they're going to start like, hey, would anybody like to pray or they call on you? And you're like, oh, my gosh, please don't call on me to pray. And I hope I'm not alone. A lot of times we just don't know. We don't feel like I'm not doing it right. Does God even care about the thing that I'm talking? God's busy running the universe. Do you think he cares what kind of car I'm going to? Like, we just don't know. Should I ask God about a relationship? Should I ask God about where should I live? I don't know. Seems like God's busy. Well, that's how we often feel sometimes. And then... A lot of times we really don't want to pray because can I just keep it all the way honest with to be on can y'all cannot can we be in this moment together? Anybody else like you do you just feel like God moves really slow sometimes. Like 
It's like, God, I kind of need this now. It's on a, it's a deadline and I probably got stuff due. I might be getting evicted. Like, I just need you to come through. And, you know, it, it just builds up a lot of anxiety and suspense. Like, oh, the suspense of it all. Is it going to happen? Is it not? I don't know. A lot of us, are you, are you with me? I, I hope that y'all are feeling me. These are a lot of reasons why we just don't want to engage in prayer like we, like we should. Now, uh, even before we move on, I want you to think about, now we've said all the reasons why, you know, prayer is not always like our thing, but I want you to just take a moment and look back on all the times that God did come through for you. Can I get an amen? Like, I know we have some disappointments or, you know, sometimes we, we're mad because we didn't get our way or we have a spiritual tantrum, if you will, but I want you to think about all the times God did come, for, uh, come through for us and how, like the old song says, all of my good days outweigh my bad days, so I won't complain. There's a lot of times that even though we might not have gotten everything we thought that we should have, that God has come through for us. Can I get an amen? More times than not, God has been there for us. God has come through. God has always made a way. Can I get another amen? All right, all right. So these are reasons why we sometimes don't want to feel like praying, but today, today, I want to invite you on a journey with me this month to level up in prayer. This is, this is the, the, what we're going to do today, and no matter, no matter what level you're on, so sometimes we get intimidated on other people's levels, like they are really good at praying, or you know, I don't, no matter what level you are currently on and where you feel like you are, or maybe you're a beginner, Maybe you've been praying for a while. Maybe you're like a prayer warrior, an intercessor. No matter where you are, I feel like God is calling us to level up, to go to the next level in our faith. Amen. Are y'all with me? How many ready? You ready to level up? No matter where you are in prayer, God is calling us to level up. Okay, so this leads us to our passage today. And today our passage is coming from Acts 16. If you have a Bible at home, go ahead and open it. If you have like your phone Bible, go ahead and open it. Acts 16, uh, 22 and 26. 22 through 26. This is a great passage. Read it on your own sometimes. It's a story about um, Paul and Silas. And they were traveling in, in the beginning, just to give you context before we get to our, our main verse. They were on this mission trip, and I mean, God was moving. Like, they were doing things. They're uh, being led to different places. They picked up Timothy along the way, and um, they were going to this one particular city called Thyra Tyra. Thyra Tyra. And they were meeting, like, people. People were getting baptized. Our girl Lydia, who was a businesswoman, got baptized and received uh, them into her home. And then one day, they were just out walking, Paul and Silas. And there was a, a servant girl or a slave girl who had a demon. And she would cry out after them wherever they go. And she would say, hey, these men are here to proclaim the good news. Listen to them. Like she would just yell out, these, sir, these are servants of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Sounds like a good message, right? Like she would do that. But the problem was she wouldn't stop. Everywhere they went, she was right there yelling out these words. And I think we talked about this before in a previous message, how uh, we have ownership of our own narrative. And it wasn't for her or the demon to be the publicist for Paul and Silas. Like, that wasn't their job. So Paul got annoyed. It says it literally. Read the chapter. He got annoyed with her. And he cast that spirit out of her. And she was free. She no longer uh, was calling out. She was free of the spirit. But the owners, the people who owned her, they were salty because they were like, now we can't make money no more. Thank you, Paul and Silas. Our hopes for making money on somebody else is, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother sermon. But they, they, it was basically capitalism. They were like, now we can't make money. We got we to gotta get rid of these guys. So a bunch of them get together, and they basically jump 
Paul and Silas. I'm getting y'all the hood version. They jumped Paul and Silas. They beat him up. Look, look, look. I'm going to take you to verse 22. It says, then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes, excuse me, and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, They threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet with stocks. This is where we're going to pick up our main verse for this message. I'm reading from Acts 16.25. It says, but at midnight... Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. What a verse. I mean, you want to talk about level up? These are levels and goals. I mean, if we're talking about prayer, I mean, this is, this is like the manual on how prayer can be so effective in our lives. And from this verse, I want to talk about four different types of prayer that we are going to be praying for this month of March, that God would just show up and manifest in our lives. Four different types of prayers from this verse. I saw a midnight hour prayer. That's one. A earthquaking prayer a foundation-shaking prayer, and a chain-liberating prayer. Come on, I'm getting excited already in my spirit about prayer and the possibilities of what God wants to do through us. First of all, let's just break down each one. A midnight hour prayer. We have them. The verse starts that, and at midnight. We've all been there before. We've all been in a midnight hour. You know that that part of your life that just seems the darkest, the part in your life that seems the loneliest, that like like no hope. They were fastened in the prison. Not only they didn't just put them in a regular prison, they put them in the dungeon. And not only did they put them in a dungeon, they fastened their feet like they did the most, the darkest, the place where you feel stuck, the place where you can't move. And, you know, side note, if that was me, I would have had an attitude. I'm just telling y'all straight up. I would have been like, God, we out here on these missionary trips. We doing all the stuff, people getting saved. And when we going to get jumped and they going to put me in jail? No, I would I would have had an attitude. But look at verse 25. Something amazing happens. Paul and Silas were in the jail praying and singing hymns. What in the what? Are you serious? Like, this was their posture at the darkest moment, at one of the darkest moments of their life. Now, this really helps us to really have a goal for how we want to handle situations in our life through prayer. We see them singing and praying. This is amazing. Can you imagine in the darkest hour of your life that God gives you a grace? Not to complain and feel sorry for yourself, but to pray and to sing So this is what, this is that come what may type of prayer. This is that in spite of it all that we just sang about. This is that kind of prayer. This is not that conditional prayer life where, hey, I'll do, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll praise God if God come through for me or if I get this job, then I'll pray. Or, you know, if you're like me, I'm just going to tell on myself, and when I don't get my way sometime with God, I'll have, I'll give God the silent treatment. Like, you know what, I ain't talking to you right now. Just side, go silent on God. I don't know if it, y'all like me, anybody else out there. That's me. I'm praying God will help me to level up. But instead, they had that come what may type of prayer. Like, God, I don't, whatever happens, whatever happens in my life, I'm still going to worship you. And I'm still going to give you the praise. I'm still going to acknowledge who you are. Because, God, you're good. And you're good all the time, even when I can't see it. Wow, this is amazing, a midnight hour prayer. How many want God to put in you a midnight hour prayer, a come what may type of prayer? And I want you to look, 
Somebody's always watching you. Did you see that in the verse? It says everyone was listening to them. There's somebody in your life who is watching you. They want to see you say that you follow Jesus. I want to see how you're going to go through this situation. How they going to handle this? How they going to deal with that person? Somebody's watching you. That's a midnight hour prayer. The second type of prayer I see is an earthquaking prayer. Come on. This is that, that prayer that shakes everything up. How many people want God to put in you a prayer life that will just shake things up? You know the things that seem like they can't be moved. You know the things that seem permanent, the things that seem stuck in concrete. How many know that God wants to put a prayer life in you that is earthquaking, that'll shake things up, that'll turn the situations around, that'll start to make things crumble and fall in the name of Jesus? God is looking to put an earthquaking prayer inside of us. I also see a foundation-shaking prayer. These are prayers that go down to the root of things. How many people need a foundational shaking prayer to get down to the root of the matter, to get down to the trauma, to get down to the behavior behind, the the symptoms behind the behavior? What makes a person act like that? Well, you know what? I'm going to pray about it, and I'm going to get down to the foundation, and I'm going to shake the very thing that is fundamental and foundational. How many people want God to put into you a foundation shaken prayer? Do you need some things to be shaken? Do you need to get down to the nitty gritty of some things? Do you need wisdom on how to excavate the things in your life? Come on, this is why we got to level up in prayer. And then lastly, I see a chain liberating prayer. God, give us a praying spirit. We need chain liberating prayer. See, they were praying in a way that everybody's chains was loose. It didn't just say, Paul and Silas got like, who? We out. We free. And everybody else stay. It said everybody's chains were loosed. Come on. I, I saw a quote that said, if God answered all your prayers, would just your life be better? or those around you. Come on, like, well, a lot of times when we're praying, we're praying for us four and no more. God bless me and mine. But Paul and Silas, they had other levels of prayer. That when God came through for them, when God answered their prayers, when they were praying and worshiping, everybody's chains were loose. How many people need chains to be loose for their family members, for their coworkers, for your neighbors, for your community? This is why we need to pray to loose everybody's chains in Jesus' name. So this month, we are reclaiming our purpose through prayer. And if our purpose is to join Jesus in his work of liberation, then we need to pray. This is our purpose. We want to liberate this. We talked about this all last month of liberation. And if we join Jesus in this in this movement, we're going to have to pray so that everyone's chains are loose. It is said the anointing. Come on. We used to pray for the anointing. How many people want to pray for the anointing to fall in their lives? The anointing is what lifts the heavy burden and destroys the yoke. Can you use a little anointing in your life? Come on. This is why we are leveling up. So family. I want you to join me this month. We're going to do a prayer level up march, all right? So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I want you to join me on Facebook or on YouTube at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. prayer. We're going to pray for about 15 minutes, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Come on, y'all join. Y'all ready to level up? Let's get it. All right, and then on Tuesday nights, we have prayer. We have prayer at 6 o'clock. It's on our Zoom link. All you have to do is register on our website. And then also on Thursday mornings at 6, we're going to have a time of worship. 
We're going to replay all the worship that Minister Lauren. How many appreciate Minister Lauren? She is just always keeps us in the presence of God. And Thursday mornings at 6, we're going to have a time of worship and play back these things. We're going to get our day started. We're going to invite the presence of the Lord into our houses. You know, a lot of times our house is filled with Meg the Stallion and all these other things. But how many know that we need the presence of God? And we don't have to wait till the building opens. A lot of times we, we would get our, our weekly fix when we came to church. But God is inviting us and has been inviting us over this whole pandemic to make your home a sanctuary, to make your room a sanctuary, to put on some worship music and allow the presence of God to come in like no other. Like you don't need all of the, the, the church. and It's good for us to come together, but God wants you. God wants you. So come on, will y'all join me? We gonna, That's Monday. That's all week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We out here. The prayer level up challenge for March. And I just want to be really clear, like, why we're praying. Because a lot of times we get into prayer and we like, yeah, I'm about to get stuff. I'm about to ask for things. Like, we're going to do all the like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's cool. We want things from God. But I want to be very clear that the goal of prayer is God. Like, that's the goal. God is the reward. Like, yes, all these other things will be added to us, but we're going to seek first the kingdom. We're going to go before God and say, God, it's you that I want. I want more of you. I want more of your presence. I want to be able to have a come what may kind of faith. I want to, in spite of it all, I want to be able to be in my darkest time and still give you a worship. And still give you a hallelujah. And still be able to pray in a way that everyone is free. Thank you, Jesus. So that's our goal. Don't forget, the goal is God. So as I close, I just want to just give us some practical ways about prayer. And I just want to challenge you to take a new approach to prayer. I know that's just, you know, I know we all come from different places and spaces and different traditions. And prayer in different places can be a lot. A lot of us come from places where prayer is really loud or dramatic or, you know, or it's really quiet or wherever. I just want to challenge us to take a new approach to prayer. And this is the new approach, to make prayer a lifestyle, like a moment-to-moment conversation with God, like just being cognizant of God throughout the day. Because a lot of times when we think of prayer, we're thinking about at the prayer meeting, like it's an event and I have to do a thing and it's going to take a lot of time and I need to put away some. Yeah, that's good, too. Like we need a balance. You do need some some quiet time, some intentional time with God. But I want to challenge you to do a kind of do it moving time with God, where wherever you are throughout the day that you're just cognizant of God and cognizant of his presence. You could be driving, you could be parking, you could be about to eat. God, I just want to take a moment just to just to recognize you. I just want to take a minute to just to check in. I want to just take a minute and say thank you. Um, This is so good. I I heard I saw a meme one time that says uh, when black people tell you they're going to pray for you, that's the prayer. Like, I don't know. That was so funny to me. Like, let's not be that person. Like, when people in your life is like, hey, pray for me, take time to pray right then. Hey, brother, let me help you. Let's pray for it right now. So let's have a, let's make prayer be a part of our lifestyle. It's something we do every day. It's like breathing. It's like the Bible says to pray about everything. Yes, everything. Like, you're not bothering God. Like, everything. Like, your parking space. Like, everything. Whatever it is. Develop this relationship with God. It also says pray without ceasing. Now, that doesn't mean that we going around, oh, Lord, we want you to bless us. As we, that's not. That's being weird. Don't do that. Don't walk around like that. But in your heart, you could go around praying without ceasing. God, I'm checking in. God, I just want to tell you how much I love you. Thank you, Jesus, for an X, Y. This is make it a lifestyle, all right? And like I said, balance your times of just do, you know, going through life with times of stillness with God. Just like any other human relationship, you need some time just to be with the people that you love and spend time with them and talk with them. Let's do God the same way. Amen. The second thing, I want to challenge you to a new approach of prayer 
is to give God the editing rights to your life. I'm going to say it again. Give God the, ev- the editing rights to your life. I don't know if anyone has Google Docs, but you can share Google Docs and other people can edit things. I want you to think about this like, like y- your life like this. Because most of the time when we approach God, we already know what we want. We're just, we're like, God, this is already what I need. I need X, Y, and Z. I just need you to sign off on it and bless it. Just already, you don't have to do anything. I've already got it all figured out. I just need you to do X, Y, and Z, and we good. Can you just sign off on this? We good? So I want to challenge you to give God a blank canvas when you pray, to really have an open heart and an open hand and say, God, hey, this is what I want to do, but I'm going to give it to you, and you can do it however you want. Amen. I'm going to do, I'm, I'm giving this to you. I'm giving this problem to you. This is how I think it should go. But I'm giving you complete control, complete permission to edit it. Take out whatever you need to add, take away, subtract, multiply, whatever you want. God, I'm giving this to you, this prayer request, this person. I'm giving it to you. Do whatever you want. And I'm going to trust you that your way is the right way. See, that comes with people in our lives, you know, people, healings. Sometimes people we're praying for, they pass away, and we're, we get really hurt about that. But we have to give people and in instances and in moments in our lives to God. And yes, it's hurt, hurtful, and yes, sometimes it's disappointing. But we have to learn to trust God and trust God's wisdom and just be able to give God the editing rights to your life. Amen. God. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for another Sunday. We love you so much. Thank you for hanging in there and continuing to be intentional with your faith. We just want to pray a blessing over you as we leave. So God, I thank you for each person who you have brought to this, this program. I pray that your word will go deep into our hearts. God, give us a praying spirit. Give us a heart to pray. Give us a heart to remember you. Give us a heart to live for you. God, we want to just pray that you will continue to bless the Way Christian Center, continue to grow us. And we're praying for revival fires, God, that this month we will never be the same after this challenge. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, family. And now, our weekly announcements. Good morning, people of the way. We're blessed that you're here. Continue to worship with us on Sunday morning online at 10 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and through our website. New members, we will host the next The Way 101 online on Saturday, March 13th at 9 a.m. If you are a new member, this orientation will allow you to learn more about The Way, our DNA, and what we believe. Also, you will get the opportunity to meet some of our leadership team and other members. Don't forget that Saturday, March 13th at 9 a.m. To register for The Way 101, use the Church Center app or go to thewayberkeley.com. Join one of our available small groups to fellowship. In addition, we also have new affinity groups for you to join. Groups such as Healing for Women, Woke Not Broke, Womanist Book Club, and even a pet parents group to fellowship with others who have fur babies. Use the Church Center app to sign up and find out more about these amazing groups. Remember, The Way has several ways for you to stay connected communally and spiritually. Go to thewayberkeley.com or to the Church Center app to sign up for Tuesday night prayer, a food box, pastoral care, and so much more. Be sure to open all our upcoming newsletters to learn more ways to serve our community. We look forward to connecting with you next week.